And I, I started to change my personal life to a more holistic lifestyle. And then once I saw the light, quote unquote, I then said, if I can treat things in a safer way, more natural for myself, then it would be a disservice not to do it for my patients. So I learned to incorporate that into my business, into my medical model of practicing. Welcome to Thriving with Diabetes, the podcast where we empower people with type 2 diabetes to live their best lives. I am your host, Gamden, a holistic wellness coach, helping people overcome challenges related to type 2 diabetes. In this episode of Thriving with Diabetes podcast, we are talking about holistic wellness and food care with a remarkable expert who has dedicated 30 years to the art of podiatric medicine. If you are someone navigating the complexity of diabetes management or uh, simply seeking ways to enhance your overall health, you come to the right place. Join us as we uncover uh, the vital connection between diabetes, food health, and holistic living, and discover actionable insights that uh, can empower you to take the first uh, steps towards a healthier, more vital life. Before uh, we dive in, let me take a moment to introduce myself. I am a holistic wellness coach uh, who dedicated his passion for health and wellness to helping uh, people like you uh, navigate the complexities of type 2 diabetes. I believe uh, that with the correct knowledge, support and mindset, you can not only manage uh, your health condition effectively, but also lead a fulfilling life. I want to create an environment that is empathetic, informative, and empowering. Living with type 2 diabetes is not easy, and it is important to acknowledge the difficulties you face. But let's remember that you have the strength and resilience within you to arise or rise above challenges and thrive. I am excited today to have our special guest with me today, uh, Dr. Richard uh, Rimmela or Doc Rick. As you know, our podcast is all about empowering people with type 2 diabetes and to lead a healthier and more fulfilling lives. And having experts like Dr. Richard on the show helps us achieve that goal. Before we dive into our discussion, I would love uh, Dr. Richard to introduce himself and share some background about him and tell us what he does it is always inspiring to learn about uh, to learn about our guests' uh, unique uh, perspectives and experience. Just to give you uh, uh, some background about him, Dr. Rick is one of a few hol- a, hol- a few uh, holistic podiatrists in the United States, and he promotes a lifestyle called start with your feet. He has six pillars and that include unique advice on supportive shoes, Doc Rex uh, orthotics, Doc Rex uh, uh, RX for uh, interval uh, training, uh, organic nutrition, vitamins, supplements, and stress management. His motto is walk strong, and live long. 
So without further ado, I will hand it over to Dr. Richard to introduce himself. Dr. Richard, welcome to the Thriving with Diabetes. Thank you, Gamden. Thank you very much for having me as a guest. I just want to introduce myself by first giving a shout out to the UK because the UK is responsible for my first memory, which was going to see the Beatles movie Hard Day's Night when I was four years old with my cool auntie. And that memory is etched into my mind, has led me to uh, have a probably the personality and the hairstyle that I have today. And I just want to give a big shout out to the UK for that, that my first influence relates to you guys. So hats off to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Anyway, I just wanted to, uh, a quick background on myself is that I've been practicing podiatry in the United States for about 34 years. Uh, I became a holistic podiatrist when I met my wife, and she was dealing with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, and she was given multiple prescriptions and told she was going to be on disability, and she said nothing doing, and she started to research and do changes in her diet and with supplements and vitamins and going gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, doing some other things. And she systematically got off every single prescription and she improved her health tremendously where there's never a day that she's bedridden. Whereas a lot of people that have fibromyalgia are bedridden a lot. And so it's a testament to her. So I saw her as my influence in my personal life. And I, tr I started to change my personal life to a more holistic lifestyle. And then once I saw the light, quote unquote, I then said, if I can treat things in a safer way, more natural for myself, then it would be a disservice not to do it for my patients. So I learned to incorporate that into my business, into my medical model of practicing. So I then was able to do some learning I created my, my, my brand, which is called Start With Your Feet. As Gamden has said, it's, it relates to six different pillars. And uh, it's basically, a, it's a lifestyle to live. And it's not a very complicated lifestyle. It's a very simple lifestyle, but it takes a little discipline. It takes being able to read some labels on the food that you eat. And to have a little bit of insight, a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking, but it's not as hard as it necessarily has to be. So in that, in that regard, I ha have been instrumental in trying to get the word out now. And I'm trying to spread the word. I have my own podcast called Holistic Strides, which I just started up, and I am happy to be guests on other people's podcasts to help to spread the word. I'm happy to do it. It is fascinating how your uh, philosophy extends beyond uh, foot health and uh, how you can help people with, uh, uh, with your uh, uh, strategy, which uh, start with your feet. And uh, if you can, like, uh, share some of the core principles of uh, your lifestyle protocol, uh, start with your feet, and how did this philosophy uh, come about? Okay, so I, the first pillar of start with your feet starts with supportive shoes. I find that most of my patients are wearing a shoe that's too short. That's the first thing. People think that their longest toe has to be right at the end of the shoe. It does not. You need about an inch, which is the width of a thumb from the end of your longest toe to the end of the shoe. So you need to have about an inch. The best way to get that is by having it very firm behind the lower heel of the shoe, which is going to promote some stability, but also to use a lace or a Velcro shoe that's going to push you into the back of the shoe. 
Then from there, you're starting with increasing your stability. The next step from there is getting a shoe where you can remove the inner sole. And from there, you can get part two of the stability, which is a pair of orthotics and which is a prescription arch support that will made of an appropriate material that matches the foot and the body and will give control to the foot and reduce motion, which will give stability to the foot, but also all the way up the leg to the lower back. So I was able to design an orthotic with a local lab uh, with that philosophy in mind, with comfort, the number one thing, but also with the ability to impart my biomechanical knowledge of the rear foot, the midfoot, and the forefoot to promote stability and motion control and reduce chances of injury. So once you are in place with those two things, a supportive shoe and an and a, and a appropriate orthotic, then you are going to be able to walk around in your daily living activities much more comfortably. And then from there, you'll be able to then start to do some exercise. And by doing that, you're really going to help with your overall health, especially with diabetes. As you know, Gamden, type 2 diabetes a lot of times is related to diet and related to weight. So if you can get to your ideal weight, you're really going to increase your chances of not having type 2 diabetes. So my goal is to get people walking around comfortably and efficiently so that they can then lose the weight if they have to lose the weight. Otherwise, just get the exercise going for your overall health. So I, I was able to come up with a prescription for interval training. Uh, I actually call it interval training rather than high intensity interval training because I don't want to scare people that might be overweight and think of it as a very big hurdle to get over. I wanna make it a little bit more easy to deal with. So I have been tweaking it over the years and my prescription is very realistic and it can be made, it can be tailored to the individual even more so. And basically it's going fast for 20 seconds and then having a rest period about five or six times and then going faster for 15 seconds, for three times, three intervals at the end. The bottom line is you want to go faster at the end. Now, you don't even have to be uh, an Olympic athlete to do this. You can do this fast walking and slow walking. You can do it in the swimming pool, fast swimming and slow swimming. You can even do it what I did this morning when I was pressed for time. I didn't even walk outside to my street and do it. Uh, where I usually sprint on my street. Instead, I did jumping jacks inside my house. And I did my jumping jacks and with interval training and 20 seconds fast and then a recovery period. The bottom line on the interval training is that if you get two whole minutes of fast intervals, when you total up the fast to two minutes, that is the equivalent of a, a, a one speed exercise for 30, 40 or 60 minutes. So you can control you can reduce the amount of time you spend. So if it only takes 12 minutes, Camden, then you can get it in before work or school. You don't have to spend an hour exercising before work or school, which is a big hurdle to people that have a family or they have a commute. They're just not going to do it. Then if they wait to the end of the day to do it, things happen at the end of the day. You have to go to the grocery store. You have to pick up the kids from school. You have to go to the, the vet. There are things that happen at the end of the day that, oh, then I can't exercise today. So to me, the ideal time to do it is in the morning. So all you need is to get up 12 minutes early to do it. So that is the reason why I'm very excited about doing it. And by doing this technique, you are able to improve your lung function and your lung capacity, which is the number one indicator of longevity. You'll also strengthen your heart, which is the opposite of long distance running, which makes your heart less efficient. You're also going to go into a, up to a 12 hour afterburn of fat, which is very important if you are overweight. 
So if you go, if you start to fall in line with a, a low white flour diet, along with doing interval training five days a week, along with going to the gym and doing resistance weight training twice a week, you are going to start losing weight. There's no way that you can. You're going to go into this af afterburn. And then finally, a, a great advantage of this technique is that it keeps your chromosomes long. And so therefore, it's an anti-aging technique. So think of it as giving yourself stem cell treatment to yourself without spending thousands of dollars. So it's a win-win. So that is the that is the interval training component of it. Of course, with now getting to diabetes specifically, you need to make sure you're very cognizant of what you're putting into your body. So the number one factor that causes the problems is white flour. That's found in bread, pasta, cookies, cake, pastries. That's the number one thing that's going to raise your blood sugar fast and it's going to turn to fat. So the first, one of the first things that I tell all of my patients is that instead of eating bread, you need to switch to sprouted bread. It's a type of bread made from sprouted wheat before it fully germinates. And it has much more protein. It has more minerals in it and vitamins, but it also doesn't have the white flour component that raises your blood sugar. So it's a piece of bread that you can get at various stores. It's called sprouted bread. That's the category. And what it will do is it will not raise your blood, not raise your blood sugar, and it will not turn to fat. So the beauty is it tastes like bread. It looks like bread. You can make a sandwich out of it, but it will act like a vegetable inside your body. And vegetables are very safe when it comes to diabetes. They will not raise your blood sugar and they have a lot of fiber. So the thing that you want to know about diabetes is reduce that white flour. And so therefore, and you also want to increase the amount of fiber that you eat. So therefore, a piece of fruit that has a low glycemic index is going to be better than a fruit juice that doesn't have any pulp or fiber in it. That's going to raise your blood sugar. So you can have a little bit of fruit, preferably the low glycemic fruit, like an apple or a pear because it has the fiber and that'll make it slower for the blood sugar to rise inside your body. So you have to combine the two, the, the diet and the exercise. But my point is let's make the exercise realistic. I even have patients that can, that aren't too mobile that just, I have them purchase a cycle, a pedal that you place on the floor and you put it next to a chair. And you could do the cycling right on a regular chair using the bicycle uh, cycle, the pedal that you can get. That's not expensive. You don't even have to get a whole exercise bicycle. And so pretty much anybody at any fitness level can do interval training. And you can tailor it. Uh, you can tweak it as such to make it work for you. That You do not need to really max out and kill yourself doing this is my point. You can tailor it and tweak it. And my prescription is basically tweaked for, for someone that's in pretty good shape. And they have found that getting back to interval training, that the faster that you can walk at age 50, the longer you will live. So that ties into your feet, obviously. And so by incorporating interval training into your regimen, starting at age 50 and not smoking cigarettes, they did a study recently where you can add up to 10 years to your life just by doing that. Then if you throw in a plant-based diet, you can add even more years to your life. So without talking about any prescriptions at all, Gamden, you can do a lot for yourself with just a few basic tweaks to your, to your regimen. Very interesting uh information and valuable uh, advice from Dr. Richard. I have watched one of your videos and you may, you asked a question or you were asked, why do people go to a holistic podiatrist? If you want to comment on this question. 
Basically, the reason why I'm a holistic podiatrist is because I want to give my patients the safest possible treatment option. I took the Hippocratic Oath when I became a doctor, which means first, do no harm. Somebody taking one Advil or a leave over the counter for a problem in their foot can potentially end up in the hospital with a stomach ulcer. The treatments that I do are natural. They do not cause stomach ulcers. So I know that my treatment is not going to land my patient in the hospital. Of course, you need to know how to dose it properly to get rid of the problem quickly because everybody needs to get rid of their problem fast these days. Everything needs to be done really quick. But my point is I'm on board with that because if it were me, I'd want to get past it quick also. However, I don't want to end up having my patients end up in the hospital with a stomach ulcer or worse from taking the treatment that I recommend. So that is why I embrace the safest method possible to treat my patients. That's where the holistic comes from. But also, I want uh, every patient that I successfully treat, I try to get them into an orthotic for the long term so that they're going to be set and have a good foundation so that they're not going to have a repeat of the same problem over and over again. And I'm also going to try to put my patient on a very strong probiotic, which is the healthy bacteria that line your gut, which helps with your digesting your food, with your immune system, but also it reduces pain, musculoskeletal pain and inflammation. So basically that's the multivitamin that everybody should be taking. It's a very strong, I recommend a 50 billion CFU probiotic every day to my patients. So that's maintenance therapy to keep inflammation down, but you're also improving immune system and improving digestion to get you to absorb your nutrients better. Okay, very interesting. And so in terms of uh, vitamins or supplements, the fr what is the first, I mean, if you are, uh, if you are going to just mention uh, three uh, vitamins or supplements, what are, what are the top three? I'll give you my top six, okay? I call them my, my big Cinco plus one, the big five plus one. So a probiotic, as I just mentioned, a natural anti-inflammatory such as fish oil. But remember with fish oil that it has to be a very, very pure fish oil. The majority of fish oils that are out there have uh, additives to them and are filled with mercury. So uh, you really need to know brands when you're buying a fish oil. I personally, I'll recommend a curcumin or turmeric or a kyolic garlic or a product called Ruma Art. These are, these are natural anti-inflammatories. Inflammation causes 90% of all health problems. So between one probiotic a day and one other natural anti-inflammatory anti a day, you're reducing... 90% of the potential problems that you can have just by doing those two things. So also, I like to recommend vitamin D3 to everybody for immune system and 100 different other things. It's actually considered a hormone. It helps, obviously, with osteoporosis, but it also helps with 100 different body processes and boosts your immune system. I also recommend a CoQ10 supplement, which is the gasoline to all of your, to the engine and all of your cells. So that's something that decreases dramatically in people over the age of 50. And it's, a, and CoQ10 is especially needed in your brain, heart, and nerves. With diabetes, there's a lot of problems with neuropathy, as you know, peripheral neuropathy and autonomic neuropathy. If you can feed the nerve cells CoQ10, you're going to give them gasoline and lessen the chance. Uh, interestingly, statin drugs, which are given like candy for cholesterol lowering, they lower your CoQ10 in your body. So therefore, taking a statin can actually cause neuropathy. So anybody that's on a statin drug 
you want to take CoQ10, the, the, the version that I like is called Ubiquinol, N-O-L. That's the version that's bioavailable. There's a ubiquinone, N-O-N-E version of CoQ10 that needs to be converted to ubiquinol to then get into the cell. So I, I recommend the ubiquinol version. And that's something that to me is something that everyone should take. Another thing to take is uh, a food-based multivitamin from natural foods, not synthetic. Or what I do is I just take wheatgrass tablets, which has all of the vitamins and minerals, plus the energy of the sun that I'm ingesting each day. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking the sun and ingesting it, giving energy also. Uh, that, and that's my fifth one. My sixth one is called liposomal vitamin C, which is a liposomal is a delivery form of vitamin C. Typically, vitamin C is ascorbic acid. And taking that form of vitamin C, if you take not too high a dose, can cause stomach upset, diarrhea, and kidney stones. The liposomal form will get into the cells and not cause those troubles. And so liposomal vitamin C is going to help with your immune system. It's going to be antiviral. And it's, 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 a, ter it's a terrific thing also to take regularly. So those are my big Cinco plus one, I call Okay, absolutely. Uh, thank you for sharing these uh, valuable insights. So uh, how do they, uh, how do people can take them like after the meal, uh, during the meal? Basically, uh, there's, no, there's no real, uh, the only one that really needs to be taken uh, around food is typically a probiotic. You're going to just take it right or either before or after you eat. But for all the other ones, doesn't really matter if you're taking it with food, without food. It really doesn't matter as far as the absorption. Okay, okay thanks a lot for that. Uh, let's talk about uh, peripheral neuropathy and diabetes. As you know, neuro, uh, neuropathy is or a peripheral uh, neuropathy uh, is a term often uh, we hear in relation to diabetes. What is uh, peripheral neuropathy and how does it relate to diabetes? This question, I get a lot of questions about uh, peripheral neuropathy and what they can do for uh, to like uh, re uh, reduce the pain or uh, have a sort of relief. Right. Neuropathy is a generalized term for meaning that the nerve is not functioning properly. There can be about a hundred different causes of neuropathy. Diabetes is one of the main ones. But also, interestingly enough, pre-diabetes can give the same side effects as diabetes. So the, the number, when people go to get a blood test, you want to know what your hemoglobin A1C number is. That's going to give a three-month reading on how you are doing with your sugar rather than the glucose number that's only in that moment in time. You want to know how you're doing over the course of three months. You want to get below the pre-diabetes range, which in the U.S. is a 5.7 on the scale. Diabetes is 6.5. But you really want to be below 5.7 because you can get the same side effects, including neuropathy, in the pre-diabetic range. So when you have neuropathy, whether it's from diabetes or something else, you want to try to find out why, what is the source of the neuropathy. So let's say the source is the diabetes. The number one thing you want to do is lower that blood sugar. You can be taking uh, supplements or prescriptions that are going to treat neuropathy symptoms, but you want to get to the root source of it, and that is lowering that blood sugar. So that's the number one thing. Then from there, you can add dietary changes and supplementation and potentially prescriptions. Neuropathy has two main forms. You have a neuropathy that causes a numbness and a tingling which doesn't really impact your life as much as the more severe version, which can give a burning pain 
and can affect your sleep. So if somebody presents with the burning pain affecting the sleep, that to me is much more serious. And that to me will warrant a prescription to work on the symptoms. But at the same time, you want to still be addressing the source, which is the high, the elevated sugar. So you still want to be doing that. I'm still going to introduce supplementation in addition to the prescription. The idea is you try to wean the patient off the prescription as their hemoglobin A1C gets lower. So then they can go without the prescription and the side effects that go with any prescription drug. Any prescription drug is a synthetic and your body treats it as a foreign invader. So the, the fewer that you take, the better. So you want to try to wean yourself to the diet, the nutrition part, and the supplementation part, which is a lot safer. So I'm going to use different uh, supplements and vitamins depending on what I feel the source is. A few of the ones that I use, Gamden, uh, are bioavailable vitamin B1, which is B1 is thiamine, but bioavailable B1 is called benfotiamine. And that is the form that gets into the cells. And you can make new nerve cells with vitamin B1. Uh, somebody might have a low vitamin B12. Vitamin B, and that can cause neuropathy too. Most vitamin B12 supplements, if you take them by mouth and goes into the stomach, the, the B12 gets destroyed in the stomach. So you want to take the bioavailable, if, if, it's a, if it's a low vitamin B12 that's causing the neuropathy, you want to take bioavailable vitamin B12, which is called methylcobalamin rather than cyanocobalamin. And you want to take it as a sublingual lozenge and you melt it under your tongue and it acts, it goes systemically that way as if you were getting an IV rather than taking it orally. And then it goes into your stomach and the stomach acid destroys the B12 that way. So that's another one that I'm going to use for neuropathy. And then there's also uh, alpha lipoic acid, which is an antioxidant, which can help neuropathy also. So I'm going to use a combination of things. Uh, I'm all, uh, as an aside, Anybody with neuropathy would help themselves by taking some hemp seed oil regularly because your body has an endocannabinoid system and it's, it, it has receptors all over, including the nerves, ready to accept uh, the hemp seed oil or CBD oil. And that can specifically help neuropathy also, where you fill the receptor up and, it can and then the nerve can function better. Okay, thank you for sharing the, uh, that information. Very valuable uh, insight uh, from Dr. Richard. Uh, so the person has to look at his uh, blood sugar levels. That has to be reduced. This like as uh, a step forward uh, to deal with uh, neuropathy. The second thing, the... A1C uh, test should be below 5.7, which has to be done every three months. And in terms of uh, vitamins, so you are recommending uh, uh, vitamin or vitamin B1 and B12. And uh, I have got something just to mention. This is something a person can uh, uh, do, but. Uh, in terms of shoes or socks, uh, is there anything can help with that? Sure. Diabetics end up in the hospital more than more than most people that don't have diabetes because of the multi-system uh, effect that it has on the body, including your immune system, your circulation, your nerves. So, and even or and even structurally, so I try to get my patients into a supportive walking shoe during the day with a lace to have the ample length to have the ample. If it's a wide foot, you need to be in a wide, and you don't want the shoe to cause a problem to land you in the in the hospital. So you want to take the shoe out of the equation. 
a short shoe, for instance, a slipper or a loafer that doesn't have a lace will be closer to the front of your foot, more likely to cause a foot complication to land the patient in the hospital. So a nice, long, supportive shoe, preferably with an orthotic in it. Then in the house, instead of going barefoot, which is not recommended as a diabetic, and not to wear a slipper, which is too close to the front of the foot, I recommend an orthopedic sandal, open toe, that comes across the top of the foot, that has a strap behind the heel to give more support. So by doing that, instead of a slipper inside the house, you're going to cut down the chances of having the shoe cause a problem with your foot, which will then cause a foot problem that might land you in the hospital and potentially lead to an amputation down the line. So neuropathy is uh, a serious health issue or a complications of diabetes? It's a very serious issue. If you have a completely numb foot, and I test all of my patients neurologically when they come in, and if they have a numb foot, they could, and, and let's say they're walking around and they're not checking their feet daily. So that's something that either you yourself or somebody that is seeing you every day needs to check the feet. If you have a numb foot, you might have a bad thing going on. You might have stepped on something. You might have an ulceration. You won't know about it till a month later. A month later, you're in the hospital. If you catch it early, you come to the podiatrist and you take care of it early, you're not in the hospital. So you do need to check your feet every day, you or somebody else. Check in between your toes as a source of, look for openings between the toes, which can be a source of cellulitis going up the foot, which can also lead to a hospitalization. Uh, ulcerations on the bottom of the foot very easily get infected with di diabetics. You want to make sure that you see any kind of blood on the bottom of the foot. That, that's an area that's getting too much pressure. That's where an orthotic and a podiatrist come in to clean, clean the area, let, let it not get infected, and then offload the area structurally with the right foundation and techniques and prescriptions to take pressure off of that area that's getting too much pressure. Very interesting. So a person has to take a proactive uh, action before things uh, go worse. So let's talk about exactly. uh, orthotics and their benefits. So uh, I think you have got uh, a customized or customized um, orthotics, which, which, which are very interesting uh, as a solution for uh, foot health. Uh, you have a video about uh, orthotics and you called it uh, the arch uh, support and the eye uh, glasses for uh, the feet or for feet. Uh, uh, in fact, exactly. I liked uh, the comparison between getting our eyes uh, checked, but not our feet. Can you explain the concept of uh, customized uh, orthotics and how they contribute to foot care, especially for people with uh, diabetes? Sure. You want to have the right foundation under your foot so you can have the best orthotic in the world. And if it's not, if it's too firm and not comfortable, the patient won't wear it. So I made it a mission to develop my own orthotic. It had to be comfortable. There, were, had, there had to be some choices, there had, and I tried to make it as affordable as possible so that wasn't an obstacle for the patient to get it because it's not typically covered by insurance. So I wanted to make it affordable. So in the, in the office, I can do my complete exam and measure the leg length, make sure one leg is not longer than the other. I can do a complete biomechanical exam. So I have done that successfully over many years and the vast majority of my patients are very, very happy with the orthotic, and it's, it works for them. To take it a notch further, I, I wanted to design something to make 
and orthotic available to people that weren't necessarily in my geographic area. So I came up with my own biomechanical theories and developed two different prototypes of orthotics that I sell on my online store that have some prescriptions in them. I call them my universal prescriptions that 99% of people out there will benefit from. I'm not going to get into technical things related to that, but one is basically uh, uh, locking the midfoot of the foot and creating a stable foot. And the other one is bringing the first ray down to become more weight bearing. I, I, I call those my two universal prescriptions. Everybody benefits from that except a very rare few. So therefore, that template is there. So if, if somebody were to go on my online store and wanted to get a pair of my orthotics, I'm only offering two, uh, my regular version and a softer version, which I call my sensitive foot one. That would be for somebody that has peripheral neuropathy that causes burning pain in the feet. So you want to get the softest possible uh, orthotic with some control in it also, but it's tailored for the sensitive foot. And so the, the, the only thing that the person online would have to do is put their shoe size in, their length and their width, and that's the whole thing. Uh, I actually did some research recently because I'm, I'm doing podcasts based in the UK, and I asked my lab, are you able to ship to the UK? And they said, yes, it's a little bit expensive. It's more expensive than shipping in Florida, but it can be done. And I would venture to guess that even with the shipping charge, which is around $100 US, my orthotic plus the shipping, I would still venture to guess that it's going to still be less than the orthotic given by the English podiatrist in, in private practice. That's, I'm not sure, but I would venture to guess that that is the case. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So... Uh... If there is someone like outside the uh, the United States and want uh, wants to work with you, for example, for uh, foot uh, care or who has uh, issues, I'm talking about a person with type two diabetes. So, what is the process? Because I know most of the time you have to see a person like. Uh, face to face, but as uh, someone remotely, how can you work with a person outside the country? Um, I don't know, as in your field, I know you're able to be a, a, a diabetic uh, life, wellness coach, life coach, but um, believe it or not, in my field, um, I'm, I'm limited geographically to who I, can, who I can treat. They need to be Florida residents because that's where my license is. So I'm not technically allowed to treat people that are not in Florida. They can be from England and they w would have to come into my office one time and then I can treat them remotely. So it's a little bit complicated from my end legally to do that, but they could certainly subscribe to my website and get my content that I put out. Uh, weekly, I put out new content. I put out a podcast twice a month right now. I put out uh, blogs and videos, and so that would be a way to uh, get information. And uh, that's basically, without running into legal issues, that would be the way I would have to handle that. I mean, obviously, there's some general information that I can give out. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. But the personal information that's tailored to that person is a little limited, believe it or not, because of the legalities. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. But yeah. they... But they could certainly, you know, look over the, the, the wellness, the start with your feet lifestyle. They can get the wellness guide. If they get a pair of orthotics, it comes with a free wellness guide that gives all my six pillars with some basic information. And that's a good start. And then from there, they can email me here and there about questions. That's okay. That I can yeah, do. So it means... Uh... If someone wants to get uh, some of your products, uh, they can uh, visit your website and order from there, right? Yeah, sure. They can go on startwithyourfeet.com, the online store. Uh, right now, it's not set up for a UK order. 
So I would say that if it's somebody from the UK that wants to order, I would say, send me an email and I'll take care of it individually by email. And I'll do it back and forth by email because I'll have to, my, my, my store is not set up for UK shipping yeah, yet. Yeah, I understand that. Okay, thank you uh, for sharing this. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, I know you don't want to call it high intensity, but <laughs> I will say it, mm -hmm. high intensity interval training for diabetes. Uh, I have watched uh, one of your videos talking about uh, high intensity interval training and you mentioned some uh, benefits that a high intensity interval training has compared to cardio or running. Uh, you recommend uh, a, or you recommended a person who is not fit to start with uh, 20 se uh, seconds of speed and uh, six uh, exercises or sets as a starting uh, point. Uh, I remember uh, when I started with uh, high intensity uh, interval training, I started with uh, 10 seconds. Then uh, I kept increasing it by five seconds until I reached 30 seconds. Uh, my question is, uh, what are uh, your recommendations uh, for combining high intensity interval training into uh, diabetes management or as a, a strategy? Yeah, you want to you want to try to do high. In, you, let's let's forget about the high intensity because I just gave it a name change to soften it. I don't want to scare people. So I'm calling it my prescription for interval training. I don't want to scare people. So I personally uh, recommend 20 seconds fast and a minute and a minute slow recovery six times and 15 seconds fast and a, and a minute slow recovery three times where you go faster at the end during the shorter time. But if you can't, you, you did it the right way. You started low, you worked your way up. I personally think 30 seconds uh, going fast is too long. So if somebody wants to start, let's say they're going to walk, 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 do a fast paced walk as fast as you can for 20 seconds. If you can't handle the 20 seconds, bring it down to 15, but just add up the totals of your fast and between the, the 15 and then at the end, maybe if you're going 15, do 10 at the 10 seconds at the end, but go faster. When you're going faster, don't make it as long, make it realistic and just make sure that the fast intervals, the fast speeds add up to over two minutes. Then you'll start to go into your afterburn after the workout, you'll start to lose weight. You also, Along the same lines, after having a meal, if you can take either a 10-minute walk after you eat or something recent that just came up on some studies, exercising your soleus muscle after you eat. So you can be, the soleus is part of the Achilles tendon complex behind the leg. And if you go up and down with the soleus muscle in a sitting position, so basically you're going on your toes up and down when you're in a seated position, you're exercising your soleus muscle. That has been shown to reduce the rise of blood sugar after you eat. So even if you don't go for a walk after you eat, if you just sit at the table and digest for 10 minutes and go up and down with both feet on your tippy toes, up and down, up and down, that's going to simulate walking. That's going to activate the soleus muscle and that is going to help your blood sugar too. So that's just a simple thing. And it's, you don't even have to get out into the street to do it. You can just do it right at the table. And I find that that's going to be a very big thing going forward where anybody can do that. As soon as you eat, just spend a few extra minutes, go up and down with your feet. Very easy to do, right? So move, move, move. Exactly. That's what that's why my motto is walk strong and live long. You want to be moving. The faster that you walk at the age of 50 predicts a longer lifestyle. So if you see somebody crossing the street, they can barely walk versus somebody that's briskly walking across the street, the person who's briskly walking has the potential to live much longer than the than the other person. 
So that's why you want to, and, and even just wearing a shoe that's too short, that's pushing on your feet, that might be a reason why you're walking slow. So just getting into the right type of shoe, the right length, the right width, that can help. Just that in and of itself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's just, uh, before we move to the next uh, uh, session, or before we finish, uh, can you uh, give some practical tips uh, to uh, prevent uh, um, uh, or improve the way people manage uh, diabetes complications, uh, anything related to lifestyle? Yeah, so I mentioned, I mentioned a few uh, things along the way. There is a simple thing also that is very uh, inexpensive and accessible to everybody, and that is organic apple cider vinegar that you can get. And if you're home, you have your bottle, and right before you eat, you take a cap, you pour it into some water, let's say, or a liquid, and drink it right before you eat. That's going to lower the rise of the blood sugar after eating. So that's a simple thing to do. You can actually get them in capsule form, take them with you. If you're going to go out to a restaurant, pop a couple in as you're working on your appetizers and just get that in your system. It'll lower the rise of the blood sugar. So that's like an inexpensive thing to do, apple cider vinegar. Another good supplement that I recommend is berberine, which is a supplement that mimics the prescription medicine metformin. So that is also something that lowers the rise of blood sugar. I personally take that one myself because I'm trying to keep my blood sugar as low as possible. I also take a kyolic garlic blood sugar control that has cinnamon in it, but it also has the garlic, which is an anti-inflammatory. So I'm, 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 I'm reducing my blood sugar. I'm reducing my inflammation when I take that one. So those are a couple of good ones to consider along with paying close attention to what you're eating. So let's go back to diet for one more second. Regular white flour pasta is not going to be good for diabetes. However, if you get a pasta made from garbanzo beans, which is what I do, or from lentils, that is going to have protein and more fiber and will not raise your blood sugar too much. So if you, you can make that switch at home, obviously, when you're out, you're not going to be able to have that option. So unfortunately, I'm going to say, try not to eat out too much because then you're going to have a lot of trouble controlling your blood sugar. Eat out, give yourself a cheat night on the weekend, let's say, but don't cheat every night of the yeah. week. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Uh, uh, when you eat outside, you don't have control what what they put yeah. in the uh, the food. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Do you have any anything you want to add before we uh, wrap up this uh, episode? Um, basically, I just want people to start uh, taking their feet a little bit more seriously. Your feet are not supposed to hurt. So your feet should not be hurting, whether it's from a shoe that's too short, whether it's from a deformity like a bunion, whether it's from a foot that's flattening, or the opposite, a foot that is a hard foot that is not flattening. All of these different factors can affect your entire health. So that is why my motto is start with your feet. Let's look there first. Let's know what our foot type is, whether it's a flat foot or a hard foot. Let's make the appropriate shoe choices based on that. Let's throw in an orthotic if we can. And then let's start doing a couple of simple things, diet and exercise wise, that are not going to be too time consuming, not going to be too expensive. And then you can really start to turn around your health just by looking at a few simple things, but starting with your feet. Brilliant, brilliant. How can people uh, find you if they want to get in touch with you or uh, learn about you and what you do? Yeah, I think it's very simple. Go on the, the startwithyourfeet.com website and then just head over to the blog page, put your email in, and then you'll get all of my content coming out weekly. 
Uh, you'll get the interval training ebook that is for free right now. So you can get that to download. And uh, if you have any specific questions, you can email me through the website, docrick at startwithyourfeet.com. Brilliant. Thank you. And then I also, and one other thing, I do have my podcast also that I, that I just launched. I'm, a, I'm about episode nine or so into my, I'm launching, I'm, I'm releasing them every two weeks. That one can be found on all the podcast sites and on YouTube, or if you subscribe to my content, that'll come right to your inbox. And that uh, podcast is called Holistic Strides. Okay, so they can uh, search for your name or your podcast on YouTube? Mm -hmm. They can just put in Holistic Strides on YouTube. The easier way to do it is just to subscribe on the website. Then it comes right to your inbox on okay, your email. Okay, that's brilliant. Great uh, that you have got uh, a podcast where people can uh, learn more and uh, improve their health as well. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, Camden. I really appreciate uh, you having me on as a guest. And once once I get further along in my podcasting, I'll have you on as a guest on my Thank show. Thank you. Thank you for the 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 invitation. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our amazing guest, uh, Dr. Uh, Richard, for generously sharing his insights uh, and time with us uh, today. Uh, uh, your contribution has, has truly uh, elevated this episode, and we deeply appreciate uh, the valuable information you have uh, provided. I want also to uh, thank every one of you, our dedicated uh, viewers and listeners, for being a part of this episode. And uh, if, if you are looking for additional assistance and support on your health journey, I encourage you to book a discovery call with me at wellnessimpact.org. During this call, uh, we can discuss your uh, needs and explore how I can uh, provide personalized uh, assistance while addressing any uh, questions you may have. If you found uh, today's episode insightful and valuable, I invite you to join our community of people committed to thriving with diabetes. To stay updated uh, with upcoming episodes, uh, empowering discussions and practical tips, make sure to subscribe to our uh, YouTube uh, channel. For those who uh, prefer other podcast uh, platforms like uh, Spotify, you can follow the, uh, the Thriving with Diabetes podcast. Once again, Thank you, Dr. Richard, for being uh, our guest today. And uh, thank you all for joining us on this impactful journey. Until next time, take care and keep thriving.